So hi, everyone. Uh, my talk is going to be on breaking PRNG, so pseudo-random generator. Uh, there have been many talks in the past on PRNG, uh, a good one on uh, Black Hat in 2013 and 2013 about various type of PRNG. In general, it's really low talk with a lot of content. Uh, I'm going to try to focus on one algorithm, so bear with me. It's going to be uh, mathematics a bit, but really easy stuff, multiplication, addition, so you should follow. Uh, and it's going to be very visual, no, no uh, pseudocode, so should be a vi really visual. And uh, there's uh, one recent talk I, I should mention that uh, specifically uh, address um, Merson Twister that was done at uh, B-Side Las Vegas, which is also a good talk because it focused only on one algorithm. So instead of seeing so many algorithms in one talk and not understanding fully one algorithm, it's good to have a really specific subject. And my target will be uh, LCG, so linear uh, congruential generator. So, so the the way I, I divide my talk, there's going to be a first part, which is going to be uh, a vulnerability that I found in a Java framework, in a specifically in Struts and Spring. Uh, LCG are in many languages, so it's going it's a categories of a, a, a generator I'm going to present. So. It's also going to apply on uh, other language. And after, at the end, I'm going to present uh, tooling. So what can you do in your pen test uh, that you do? Uh, and, uh, but the first part will be more uh, theoretical, but also uh, how the exploitation works. So because since you need to understand uh, really how it works to exploit it if you have the source code, or if you're trying to guess how the system works, it's uh, really important to have a good understanding of how it works you cannot just blindly use tools. So uh, yeah. So first, there are many types of uh, pseudo-random generators. So pseudo-random generators are uh, generators that are not targeting security, but they are in a language to generate value because we always need uh, random value if it's a game that you need to generate uh, anything that is not linear. So, um, but. The most common uh, implementation we see is linear uh, congruential generator. So the language, uh, if they use LCG, it's going to be the same algorithm, but they use different constants. So it's small variation, but the, the mechanism I'm, I'm going to present, if you see an LCG in another language, it's going to be the same thing, just different constant, same operation. Uh, ArrayBase, it's a different categories that we see across a different language. Mercent Twister is used. So uh, in PHP, when you see empty underscore uh, rand, that's Merson Twister, but that's not the focus of uh, this talk. And there are many uh, algorithms that are specific to uh, language. So for example, V8 has its own uh, specific algorithm. Uh, same thing for Perl. So it, th there are still uh, many uh, algorithms, but LCG and Merson Twister are uh, the most common one. So this is the focus of my presentation. So you're probably not going to be able to read the, the snippet of code, but uh, I hope so. So just a small puzzler to uh, maybe have an interest for what's going to follow in the presentation. We have a snippet of code that, that is taken from uh, Spring, which is actually still in the code. So uh, they need to generate an uh, ID for various type of things. So it's going to be unique identifier for messaging, for uh, ID in, in database, but it's basically a GUID representation of, of an ID. So uh, in two line, what it does is first generating uh, with secure random a value, then it's using this value as a seed for uh, the, the random uh, to a random instance, and then it's obtaining a value from it. So the important step to identify. So maybe I give you ten seconds to think about it. So the first part is generating a value from secure random, then passing it to random instance, and then uh, obtaining uh, the next value. So the thing to, to see uh, and, and a potential weakness, it's uh, potentially the developer saw the implementation of random and saw, OK, the, the default seed is uh, just the timestamp, current millisecond. So we're going to try to have something secure. So we're going to generate a random seed to be sure that nobody can predict our value. But the thing is that the seed is secure, but the random instance that's going to be used 
uh, the state is going to be predictable, and this is uh, what my talk will focus. So, so with uh, if we can receive some value, we're going to be able to predict all the the previous one and all the following one. Uh, okay, so just that just to highlight that first it was secure random that was used, but in the end the values are generated from a, a random instance. So in other language, the, the different paradigm is we have random. Uh, API and secure random. In just in another language, in C sharp, you're going to see system random, and there's a in the cryptography namespace a random number generator. So, in our language, you, you're always going to have the basic random one that that is uh, the quickest to use, and then there's a cryptographically secure API. So, what's really the difference between between those those two uh, type of API? So. Um, a LCG versus um, a secure random, what uh, goal is it trying to achieve? So uh, first, uh, the goal is not security. It's uh, The idea is to have equal distribution. So if you're generating a uh, random value for a game or to just generate data, you don't want to have the same value repeat. So you generate two, three, and then all of a sudden, it's just the same value. So it breaks the purpose of add, having a random value. So it should be uh, uh, equalized, uh, equal distribution am among a large set of values. So that's the objective. But uh, so far, nothing about uh, I cannot predict the next value or the previous one. And also performance. So if you're uh, doing a game and you're generating uh, values or you, you need uh, anything um, that has th doesn't require security, you don't want to spend uh, uh, too much CPU effort to on generating those values because it's going to slow down your application if you have no uh, security requ requirement. On the other end, cryptography, uh, secure random, have different objectives. So first, uh, uh, the equal distribution is also going to be a characteristic because if uh, the first few bits are always have more pr probability to be uh, a certain value than others, then it's not cryptographically secure. But uh, the most important uh, criteria is it needs to be unpredictable. So if you have one value, you shouldn't be able to predict the next one. So that's uh, what those API uh, has as a contract. So we, we know uh, the API says it's secure, and the other one, as comment in the, the documentation, shouldn't be used as, as secure. But if you s see those uh, API being used, so is it exploitable in practice? So, and uh, the answer is most of the time it's going to be exploitable. So, uh, oops. The next step now uh, that we know that the, the SCG are not secure, I'm going to describe how an SCG work, and we're going to see where it can be attacked. So, um, the the SCG algorithm will be the same if it's an SCG in whatever language. The constant, if I mention some, it will be uh, associated to the Java uh, implementation. But it's going to be the same algorithm across different language. So it's gonna, you're going to see each box uh, being as a, a state of the value. So as the uh, uh, an added box is uh, created, it's just an evolution of the value. So Everything starts with a seed. So the, the seed could be time, a timestamp or a random value or a static value. But we need a starting point. So that's the state of the LCG at the time zero. So the first step we do in an LCG is a multiplication with a constant. So the language will choose a generally big value. Uh, then there's an, uh, an addend with a generally a small value. And um, then the 48 bit are going to be kept. It's uh, the most, uh, the less uh, significant one that are going to be kept. Uh, but sometimes it's truncation due to overflow. But in this case, in Java, it's really uh, the, the only kept uh, 48 uh, bit. Then we have our second state. So that's a C, but that's not uh, the, the value that we uh, first generated. So the first integer we're going to take from the seed. Uh, only the 40, 32 bit, but the most significant one that were kept from the previous state. So then we have one value generated. And this is the, the same state we're going to go through for each value we want to generate. So 
basically we have generate value one and then value two is going to be the same operation one after the other so okay uh, so we have a this, the same step but with a value so we have an initial seed of uh, one three three seven one two three seven so we multiply it with uh, the big uh, multiplier we have another value we add it bl which is a just B, actually. And then uh, we do uh, a XOR with those FFF. So actually, at the bottom, it's the, the current value. So, so we multiply the value with this constant. Then we add the value B, which is the L just for long. It's a, an artifact. And then we XOR it with FFF to just keep uh, the bits we want, the less significant one. Then this is going to be our seed that is going to be used for the next value. And then all we need to, the last operation, it's the less significant bit that are truncated. And then this is going to be the uh, nin value that is generated by the uh, pseudo random generator. So we can see that through those steps, uh, we don't have the complete information. It's not reversible just by mathematical operation because we have lost uh, the least significant bit. And then uh, we have also a truncation at uh, the last step before obtaining the seed. And the multiplication generally overflow the, the value. Okay. But um, an attacker will have at least one of these values. So that's one of the attack scenario we'll, we're looking for. So if we have the first value, uh, and for example, uh, as a scenario, you can keep in mind if uh, a website has a reset link for password that they are sending through the email, they're going to need to generate a value. So at some point for your user, you're clicking the button for your email, uh, I want to reset my uh, password. So they send you a link to your email, and it's going to be the first value, for example. But the thing is that if you trigger the same operation for another account that you're targeting, you shouldn't be able to predict this value because uh, this way you'll be able to reset it, its password and then uh, you're going to win. So, so what we're targeting uh, with those operations, there's actually one step. Uh, okay, so the objective is to go from one value to the other. The thing is that there's only one step in uh, the this part that we need to, uh, we're, we're missing some information. And it's the, the part where uh, the least significant uh, bit were truncated. Other than that, if we start from uh, the, the, if we have the C number two, we can just go through all the operation and then we have the next value. So first thing we, we see is there's not that much information that we're missing. So if we have a value, the only uh, part we're missing to generate the next value it's a 16-bit. So uh, the only thing we need uh, in those cases is to brute force the 16-bit, uh, and then uh, for each try, do the, the same loop. And then uh, if we obtain, uh, actually, for an attacker to do this attack, the easiest way is to have two value. So if the, if the, the attacker can generate, for example, a reset password for two times, he'll be able to take the value. Uh, the two value, the, the uh, sequential value, and then just do op the operation. And then once the, the try he makes uh, result with the same value, then you can guess it's uh, potentially uh, the, the, the good seed that he has found. So then with the seed, he can generate all the subsequent uh, values. That's it. So once we have found it, then we can uh, just obtain all the, the next value. So uh, one thing we need to consider is that uh, most P uh, LCG will generate ints. So, but the thing is that the implementation of the software will represent those ints in different forms. So sometimes uh, the int will be uh, the, the API will be called with next long instead of just obtaining the int. So most of the time the, the API will just concatenate two values. So, uh, quick question: uh, If I need two two int to find the seed, if I get uh, how many long value do I need to be able to find the, the seed? Anybody? Uh, Guillaume Ross pointing uh, one value. That's exact, because we have, if we have just one long value, 
or actually uh, eight bytes would be also equivalent. We have two uh, si uh, subsequent uh, value. So we'll be able to do the, the, the bridge and find the seed uh, without doing many requests. And it, and it will work. So that's one way. Uh, also, another uh, potential implementation sometime uh, next int will be called. And from the, this int, it will be uh, convert to uh, an alphabet. So and it also. We're losing more, uh, more bits to and th th this require more analysis and more uh, brute force. So, and I don't know if I have that much of time. Yeah, perfect. Um, so, with the, the, the screen being uh, a bit uh, small, instead of opening my console, it's really just two comments. You're going to see it's going to be uh, quite easy. So, uh, I'm going to present it just on the slide, but uh, you can it's a how to use a prankster that uh, support many LCG. It also support other uh, implementation, but the uh, prankster is currently the the most versatile tool to support many implementation. And I'm going to show you what you things you need to consider in order to use it um, on a potential uh, next pen test. So the scenario we have a recover password functionality. So we have reset. Uh, our own password, so we have received various links. So uh, for those who cannot read the, the API, it's acme slash recover. And then we have a parameter token. So we have uh, three values that we know. So, and then we have generate one for another user, but we don't have on our end this value. So our objective is to predict what's going to be the, the next value. So the first step to do with Prankster is just to accumulate those values and these will be our input values. So just create an input that text, and that then it's going to be the content that's going to include just the token we have. So the next step, we're going to do the recover operation with Prankster. So it's the R parameter. Then the algorithm. So the algorithm, you're going to find it, uh, it's going to be guessing. Most of most of the case, so unless you have access to the source code and you know exactly what's the implementation, you're going to need to guess, uh, OK, uh, I see uh, it's probably um, uh, uh, JavaScript V8 because I see this framework. It's Express, for example. Uh, if it's a Tomcat server, so uh, potentially it's going to be a PRNG in Java. So you're going to need to do a, a, a good guess. And if you have no idea about the technology, it's going to be pretty hard because there are many implementation, and there are also other parameters to do a bit of guessing. So, But the first part that you need to identify is what's the algorithm. So in this case, it's PRNG Java for the GVM. So uh, yeah, and then the second parameter is the alphabet. So for each uh, next in that is called, we, uh, we guess that the if it's a weak implementation with a weak PRNG, it's going to be converted to a character. So this is the, the part where we, you're going to need to do a, a bit of guessing. So it's going to not going to include alphanumeric, uh, uh, alphanumerical with uh, uppercase, lowercase all the time. So a good way to maybe identify th this alphabet is having more samples. So if you have just two samples, uh, you could do a lot of guessing. But if you have many, you can have a more uh, precise guess on what was the alphabet being used. So the command is really easy. So once you ask all those parameters, the last thing you need to do is put in input all your uh, generated value. And uh, Prankster will find recover the seed. So this seed is going to be uh, the state of your PNG uh, prior your, the value that you have uh, put as input. So if I go back, the, the seed being printed out uh, 113. This is the, st the seed uh, prior generating the uh, G, K, C, uh, the first value. So the next step, we want to generate the next value. So we have the state of the PRNG. So it's really just a, a small little step that is uh, required. So we have a more parameter. So again, we have since we have a potential seed, the same algorithm, the same alphabet, uh, that we have uh, used, and then we specify the seed and the length. So how many characters do we need to generate? So 
uh, in this case, we have found a seed. It's potential that in some case there's many potential seeds, so you're going to need to retry a, a few. And then the length. So in this case, we had four values, so what would be the, the fourth one? Uh, and now we have what's gonna, what was the, the token that uh, was generated from the, the user uh, we're targeting. So, and uh, Prankster, that's one tool that will cover most LCG. There's uh, Untwister if you're looking for, uh, to attack uh, Merson Twister. But uh, this one has uh, many algorithm uh, support. And uh, depending on the implementation, it's possible that you, you need to, to modify the tool to make it work to uh, what you're targeting. And uh, that's it. Uh, that's the end of my uh, short presentation.